Okay, this is an extra video about a subject called invariant theory. So I'm only going to make the barest inroads into invariant theory in this video, but I want to explain somehow how this grows out of the example we've just done. So the example we just did was sim2 sim2 of c2 as a representation of uh, su2 or sl2c is isomorphic to uh, sim4 of c2 direct sum the trivial representation so um, just as a recap if this guy had a basis alpha beta gamma then this sim2 of sim2 has a basis of things like alpha squared alpha beta so quadratic expressions in these basis vectors and um, this trivial subrepresentation I claimed at the end of the last video is spanned by uh, beta squared minus alpha gamma. And the thing that's a bit weird is, um, you know, sim 2 c2, we've said this is like quadratic polynomials or quadratic forms in x and y, right? x and y are a basis of c squared. So the quadratic forms are things like alpha x plus beta, uh, x, alpha x squared plus beta x y plus gamma y squared, and sim two of that is like quadratic expressions in the coefficients of those quadratic forms. And we kind of know there's a special expression in the coefficients of a quadratic form that tells us when that quadratic form has a repeated root, but it's not this. It's it's b squared minus four ac. Right, that's the thing that you stick inside the square root when you're solving a quadratic equation. And that's somehow what we expect to see here. Um, and the reason that we're missing this factor of four is because we've been a bit slapdash about this correspondence here. Okay, so it's true that the space of quadratic forms in X and Y is isomorphic as a representation of SU2 to uh, SIM2 of the standard representation but really the isomorphism isn't quite the one that we have uh, used uh, so far and actually the correct isomorphisms we should be taking b equals beta over uh no beta equals b over two uh alpha equals a and and gamma equals c so i just want to kind of explain a little more precisely how to do this calculation so that you get the right answer in the end moreover once you've seen this um, you know, you'll be able to generalize this to say polynomials of three variables or cubic polynomials or, and, you know, try and understand when there are invariant quantities associated to those that maybe say when two roots agree or when well, all sorts of crazy things. So the st subject of invariant theory is precisely like what generalizes this statement that this quantity vanishes when two roots coincide. There's a whole load of other in interesting invariants that you can get. Um, so let's uh, start from scratch. So if I have a quadratic form or a quadratic polynomial in X and Y, I can write it in the following form. I can write it as X, Y, the row vector times A, B over two, B over two, C, two by two matrix times X, Y, the column vector. Right, if I do that, if I multiply that expression out, um, I'm going to get x times ax plus by over 2 plus y times uh, bx over 2 plus cy and if you just multiply that that's ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared. So we can identify quadratic forms, quadratic polynomials in X and Y with two by two symmetric matrices like this. Now, what about the action of the group? So we've been using the group SU2. I'm actually going to allow ourselves to work with a slightly bigger group um, so because it works. So I'm going to allow ourselves to change basis by an element M in SL2C, the group SL2C. So two by two complex matrices with determinant one. If I do that, x, y 
is going to be sent to uh, mxy. The uh, row vector xy will go to the row vector xy times m transpose on the right. All right if you transpose this whole expression mxy, you get xy as a row vector times m transpose. Um, so this quadratic form turns into xy m transpose times this matrix a b over 2 b over 2 c times m and then times xy. So that's our new quadratic form. So let's be completely explicit about this right so if m is stuv as a 2 by 2 matrix we can really write out what we get here we get s u t v times a b over 2 b over 2 c times s t u v so i'm going to pause the video multiply these matrices out um, i encourage you to do the same um, and check that you get the same thing as me okay and this is the answer this big mess i've done it in two steps um, so you can pause the video and check your working um, okay so let's think about this in a slightly different way let's write the, the quadratic form as a vector a b c a three vector after doing this um, this transformation with this element of SL2C, we end up with a new three numbers, A, B, and C. But the new A is uh, S squared, S, U, U squared, multiplied into A, B, C. The new C is T squared, T, V, and V squared, multiplied into A, B, C. And the new B is 2 S, T, U, T plus S, V, 2uv applied uh, multiplied into abc so in other words we're changing uh, abc according to this matrix here the factors of 2 in this the second row come from the fact that this entry of this matrix is supposed to be the new b over 2 so this is our space of quadratic forms this three dimensional abc space and this is how it transforms when we apply an element of SL2C. So this is like a three-dimensional representation of SL2C, except it's not really a representation. It's almost a representation, but it's not quite a representation. Let's see why. Well, if I apply a matrix M1 to XY, and then a matrix M2, then well, how does the transpose change? It becomes... Uh, x y row vector m1 transpose m2 transpose so my quadratic form is given by this expression x y row vector m1 transpose m2 transpose a b over 2 b over 2 c m2 m1 x y so although m1 was the first thing to hit x y m2 is the first thing to hit a b and c so what we end up with is actually an anti-representation in the sense that if I do R of M2, M1, this ends up giving me R of M1, M, uh, R of M2. So the 3x3 the three three matrix I've just written down, it's not a representation of SL2C, it's an anti-representation. But we can fix this in a sort of silly way just by taking the transpose, right? If I replace each of these matrices by its transpose, that fixes the order and I get a representation. So this is the representation to which we're going to apply our theory. So you might like to think a bit about what this means. Um, I'm not going to go into it in a huge amount of detail because I've tried recording myself talking about it a few times and it always sounds like nonsense but the basic idea is that we're instead of thinking about A, B and C as the entries of a vector we're thinking of them as projections onto the coefficients of the quadratic form and that's that's how uh, so this this transpose representation is how SL2C acts on those projections um, 
Okay, so what I want to do is I want to figure out the weights of this representation, figure out how X and Y act, the cap capital X and capital Y in the Lie algebra act. Um, so let's copy this matrix and bring it down to the next page. So I'm going to pick some particular entries, S, U, uh, S, T, U, and V, and, s and see what happens. So let's let's do uh, this matrix first, right? So um, I should say uh, we're looking for things in the group first, right? So S, T, U, V is going to be e to the i theta, 0, 0, e to the minus i theta. Um, so this is exp of i theta h. How does that act? Well, a lot of these things are zeros. A lot of these entries are zeros. We end up with e to the i 2 theta uh, 1, e to the minus i 2 theta on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So we see that um, A has weight 2 and uh, C has weight minus 2, B has weight 0. I should actually remember to transpose this matrix. So let me just uh, niftily transpose like this. No, that doesn't move. Okay, so that doesn't matter for the moment because we've only done diagonal things, but it's going to matter now. So what happens if I take um, S, T, U, V to be exp of T, X? So that is uh, 1, T, 0, 1. Well, if I bung S equals 1, T equals T, U equals 0, and uh, V equals 1 into this matrix, I get um, 1, 1, 1, zeros below the diagonal. I get 2T, T squared, and T above the diagonal. So this is how X, TX acts. And... Um, so, uh, so how does X act? Well, I have to differentiate this matrix, this three by three matrix with respect to T and set T equals zero. And that's gonna give me zero, two, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. And you'll notice it's not enough to just substitute this matrix X into uh, this three by three matrix with the S's and the T's. That's because this is an element of the Lie algebra, this this X over here, and this is a formula you use for elements of the Lie group. So you really, you have to apply this three by three matrix to X, T, X, and then differentiate to get the action of X. You get a different answer if you just substitute X in here. So this is the correct thing to do. Okay, so um, what's going on? This is saying that the first element, the first coefficient of your quadratic form under x transforms to zero, so a goes to zero. The second coefficient goes to a, uh, sorry, two times a, and the constant coefficient, the y squared coefficient, goes to one lot of b. Okay, so this is how x is acting in our representation. Um, now we know this representation, this three-dimensional representation, is isomorphic to uh, sim2 of c squared because the weights are 2, 0, minus 2, and that's the only representation with those weights. So this is isomorphic to sim2c2. And remember, the basis for this was uh, e1 squared, e1, e2, e2 squared. We're calling this alpha, beta, and gamma. But if you look at the action of x on alpha, beta, and gamma, you get something a bit different. 
All right, so alpha, beta, and gamma still have the, the, right, the right weights, minus two, zero, two. But, um, you know, x applied to gamma, that's x applied to e2 squared, was two e1 e2. So gamma goes to two lots of beta, and beta goes to one lot of alpha, alpha goes to zero. So although these two representations are isomorphic, they're not isomorphic via the map that sends A to alpha, B to beta, and C to gamma. You need a slightly different map. And the one that works is you send, uh, you set C equal to gamma, A equal to alpha, and uh, B over two equal to beta. Because then, uh, where does gamma go? Gamma goes to uh, two beta, which is uh, B. So C goes to B, and that's what we want on this top line, right? C goes to B. And similarly, where does B go? Sorry, where does, where does beta go? Beta goes to alpha, which is A. So beta over two goes to A, so B goes to two A. Okay, so the correct isomorphism to pick between these representations actually has this extra factor of two in, and that's why when we looked at the invariant element, in terms of the beta and the alpha and the gamma, we got beta squared minus alpha gamma, because that translates to uh, b over two squared, b squared over four, minus ac, which is a quarter of the usual discriminant of a quadratic form, b squared minus four ac. Okay, so that was a slightly long-winded um, explanation, uh, but that's because there are some subtleties in, in this, right? This, this is the choice of isomorphism between these two representations. Um, okay, so this, as I say, this is, begin this is the beginning of a subject called invariant theory. It's, you know, much more general than just quadratic forms. You could do the same with cubic forms, right, in, in two variables, and look at sim three of c squared and say, you know, what kind of quantities in the coefficients of uh, a cubic form uh, vanish when uh, when two roots agree. So that will be the discriminant of a cubic. Turns out that is an element of sim4, sim3 of c squared. So you can calculate this representation, check it has a trivial sub-representation, and actually calculate wh what element generates that trivial sub-representation. It's the kernel of x acting in this representation. And it's a big complicated expression. Um, but to get the right answer, you need to pick the right isomorphism uh, between the sort of alpha, beta, gamma, actually there'll be four, right? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta here, which are things like E1 cubed, uh, E1 squared, E2, etc. Between those guys and the actual coefficients of the cubic. And I think the thing you want to do is you want to take um, A equals alpha, uh, beta equals b over 3, gamma equals c over 3, and delta equals d. So your cubic is going to be um, ax cubed plus bx uh, squared y plus cxy squared plus dy cubed. Right, and this is not restricted to uh, two variables. It works in all sorts of different variables, but you then have to work with different groups. So instead of SL2C, you'd have to work with SL3C or SLNC um, or other Lie groups.